I've been thinking about this idea for a few months. I call it the pellet core printer. It combines a pellet extruder with a core XY printer. Now it's kind of like an oxymoron in a way because the pellet extruder has a lot of mass and the core XY printer is designed for a minimal amount of mass moving at the head. So this is it. This is on a Trunksy X5 SA printer. I'm going to go over the results real quick before showing you how I put it together. So this was the Trunksy's result with just a normal nozzle. And it had 100% infill. And, uh, you know, it looks normal. This is the first go with the Mehor. I noticed that the infill was pretty weak at the typical 0 0.9 uh, extrusion multiplier. So I cranked it up to 2 and it's much better. Now notice the color. It's because there's some colorant. You'll see that in a little bit. Well, yeah, here's a uh, quick rundown of how I built it. There's some tips and tricks there, so maybe you can avoid a couple headaches um, along the way. Yeah. Here are some recommendations to start with the build. Uh, before you even start taking the V4 apart, 3D print the four pieces that go with it. Actually, the two, um, the most important part is this one to adapt so that pellets go in here. You can even test and put little pellets in here ahead of time. Then from there, to uh, you can either use vacuum conveyance to send pellets to this, or use this hopper. This hopper takes like it took me about eight hours to print over on the uh, Creality Six. Um, and then here's a fan duct. So I would print those ahead of time to be prepared. After that, you can take things apart, start taking things apart. That's the way to do it. Uh, the, the main tool you'll need is this 2 millimeter hex wrench or Allen key. And the 1.5 millimeter is also used for the block here for the thermistor right there. Uh, you'll also need a adjustable wrench for this nut. This heater block spins off of here. The nice thing about this is, uh, so this uses the diameter of the, uh, it has the same diameter as the Tronxy heating element. So it's like, it's around a quarter inch or six millimeters. I, I forget exactly. But um, this slides right in. I'm planning to reuse the thermistor and heating element from the Tronxy. So no rewiring there and then on the fan side I might have to splice in these fans the red and black wires to the existing we'll take a look here I do like how this is symmetric these come off easy there are these spacers you gotta remember to put the spacers in and these standoffs um, yeah not too bad I used one of the bolts to secure the previous extruder here but the holes don't line up so I have to drill another hole somewhere in here to mount this I drilled two through holes here these are for M3 bolts use an eighth inch drill bit but they're close enough where it works fine these are about mm, 14 and a half millimeters apart. The standoffs are on. From the other side, it's going to look something like this. This is a completed unit. And you can see there's screws on the other side of the mount plate and the standoffs. So the mount plate is on. Mounting the whole unit to the head is a bit tricky because accessing these bolts, there's no holes or anything. So I'm going to drill some holes to access these and mount the whole thing. 
going to drill another set of through holes through the plate behind this plate here behind that extruder screw there with the goal of being able to mount this whole thing at once design wise I think uh, if there's a V5 coming out it'd be a lot easier if there were like say more holes lasered in on this pattern here to make this more accessible I'm going to show you how to avoid one easy mistake make sure you put these in the through holes and not these threaded holes so there's four through holes two three four otherwise things aren't going to line up so you're going to put these on the other side and then the standoffs connect here the easiest way to do this seems to be attaching the standoffs and the spacers first with this plate notice I've dr drilled uh, through holes here to access this back plate in a little bit we're going to take these M3 screws and then use them to mount the mounting plate to the standoffs notice how these are sticking through we're going to use those to um, mount this whole thing to the extruder those mounting holes came in handy I just mounted this whole thing to the carriage that moves back and forth here well I forgot to thread the heater block on so I had to take the whole thing apart and I'll have to put it all back together again alright had to pull on had to tug on the heater and their mister wire a little bit but now it's all in there this is the silicone sleeve that goes around it. Normally, the wire that comes with the Mehor, like this is the heater wire, would be run up and through either here or on the other side over here. But because I'm using the existing wire, what I'm going to do is screw this on here and kind of leave it loose on the right hand side see how that works I might do just like two or three screws instead of four let's see if the fans spin up on power up yep Okay, well, here are the crimp connections, and use this crimper. Alright, I've wired in this connector here, it's going to plug right in to the E-axis port, right in here, right in there. I'm using the following connectors I'm using this I'm using this XHP4 connector with these sockets these are all digikey part numbers and then using chain flex cable from IGIS this is the part number and then to crimp everything, this IWIS tool. The wire color ordering numbers, the standard, white, brown, green, yellow. I made some temporary electrical connections here at the head with electrical tape. In the meantime, it's heating up the extruder, which is good. And then we'll test the extruder uh, with some pellets. All right, I've done the dry run. I'm going to load this LX175 PLA with some trace colorants in here, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, I'm waiting for this to heat up. 
In the meantime, I'm trying to trick the machine on this first go. I have some filament here in this sensor so it doesn't give me some kind of like filament out error. And then what I'm doing is I'm just manually triggering this when the nozzle gets really close to the bed so that, you know, I'm just manually telling it when to, when it hits the bed and then it's going to print from there. If the stepper's not really happy, uh, it'll make that sound, that clicking. It's because I'm reheating it right now and it wasn't quite hot enough. Now it's going. Now it's going. Cool. Cool. Yep, I've never seen this before. A pellet extruder on a Core XY machine. Pretty far out. Some of the colorant is starting to come out, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, looking good. Looking good. Let's put a uh, we'll put a ruler down here to estimate speed. So that's one inch per side on the block, and it's going to be a quarter inch tall when done. Um, pretty neat. Pretty neat. Well, thank you for watching, everybody. In the future, maybe I'll try some things like cranking up the speed and pushing the machine to the max. We'll see if we can get some ringing. Um, but in the meantime, this is the initial, you know, build and tests, and uh, hope you enjoyed. Happy printing, everybody. Take care.